All right, guys, we have an update in the GPT space. Yesterday, it was announced that ChatGPT4 is now available in beta, i.e. it's available to those of you who pay for ChatGPT with some limitations, with some limitations. So basically, uh, I have this drop down now where I can select either ChatGPT 3.5 or GPT4, right? And you can see that as I scroll past these different things, you can see there's different bars that represent how good this is at different things. So for example, GPT 3.5, has a certain level of reasoning, speed, and conciseness. Uh, if you look at the legacy ChatGPT, you can see the speed goes down, uh, the reasoning stays the same, and its conciseness is, uh, is uh, obviously um, lower. And then finally, you have GPT-4, which you can see it has a little bit less uh, speed than maybe the default ChatGPT-3, but it's better at reasoning and better at conciseness, okay? So if we go ahead and select ChatGPT4, you can see at the bottom, it tells us that we have a cab of 100 messages every four hours, and we can start to play with this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take an example from a previous video that I created where I built this. This is a canvas with a bunch of bubbles floating around the screen where the bubbles bounce off of each other and bounce off of the walls. I created this using ChatGPT3 before, but it took a lot more prompts and it couldn't figure out a lot of things until I kind of helped it. This time, through seven prompts, I had already done a chat with ChatGPT version four, and it created all of this code. I wrote no code at all. I just had to ask it a couple prompts, in this case, seven. So now I have a new code sandbox here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to ChatGPT four and paste the same prompt that I pasted before. So I'm gonna say, using a canvas, create a React component with a black background and white bubbles. The bubbles should move randomly around the screen and bounce off of each other when they collide. Each bubble should be 60 pixels in diameter, and there should be 20 bubbles, okay? So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna write out what we need to do to create that. So first it's saying step-by-step, step, we need to create a React component called Bubble Canvas. We need to set up a Canvas element inside that component, set up the Canvas context and drawing logic, create a bubble class for managing the bubble properties and behavior, and initialize an array of bubbles and animate their movement. So what it's gonna do now is walk us through each one of those steps. So let's see what the code that it generates. And we're gonna go ahead and take that code and we're going to paste it into our code sandbox such that we can create what I created before in that code sandbox. Also, for those of you who are not familiar with code sandbox and what you're seeing on the screen, this is uh, creating a bunch of JavaScript code which is going to render stuff uh, on a page using React. React is a framework for building front-end applications. Um, so I happen to be familiar with React, so that's why I asked it to generate it in React. Uh, but you could potentially ask it to do this exact same thing using other frameworks as well. And Code Sandbox is a place where you can play with code. So in this case, you can see we have a single React component called App, which renders a div, an h1, and an h2. And we're going to modify this code by pasting the code that ChatGPT generates into here, just like I did in this example. All right, so we have a bubble canvas. You can see we have some imports from React over here. Uh, it looks like it created a class bubble here. Now, one thing I don't like is that, um, you know, being a programmer, I see that it's defining the class bubble inside of the use effect. Uh, that's not ideal. I'll probably ask it to move that out um, eventually, but let's go ahead and uh, render this. So let's see, we've got, let's copy this code. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot before we tell it to, you know, modify it. Do do bubble canvas. I bet this has a default export. We don't want a default export. We just want to render it right here. So we'll go ahead and render the bubble canvas. All right. So already one prompt and we have bubbles moving around the screen. Okay. So that was pretty easy. I didn't even really read the code. I just knew enough that um, I needed to paste it, delete the default export, and put it in its location. But now I really don't like the way it wrote this, and I also want the bubbles to bounce off of each other. So I'm going to ask both of those things at once. Okay, cool. Uh, can you move the class definition outside the component? Because it really shouldn't be in there. Also, can you add logic to make the bubbles bounce off each other. So let's see what it does. And again, this is only my second prompt. I give it one prompt and already I have a working example with bubbles 
that are floating around the screen, black background, white bubbles. I just need to tell it how big I wanted them. I wanted them to be moved randomly around the screen and they're already bouncing off of the walls. So, and just to remind you that in the previous example that I already ran before making this video, I actually uh, used seven prompts to get this one to work where the bubbles actually do bounce off of each other. So let's see if I can make it do it in even less prompts this time. Okay, so you can see already it moved the class bubble outside of the component, which is where it always belonged. Um, already I noticed a bug here because I, I'm a programmer, so you know I see this and I'm like, okay, they're defining the class bubble and they have this CTX, right? So CTX is probably like the canvas component and they have an updates canvas here, right? So I noticed that CTX is not passed into the constructor. Um, so I'm probably going to have to, you know, tell this to rewrite this such that it, when it instantiates the new bubble down here, it's probably going to pass in the canvas, right? So we have the CTX here, which uh, is the canvas.getContext2D. Um, so let's go ahead and actually, um, let's actually stop generating. Let's say, okay, the code you were writing was good, except you forgot to pass CTX and canvas into the bubble constructor. All right, so again, not ideal if you're not a developer because I as a developer noticed um, that there was gonna be an issue there, uh, but eventually you would have probably pasted that code into code sandbox. There would have been an error saying CTX is not found and uh, you would have just said, hey, here's the error. Can you please help me fix this? Okay, so let's see what kind of code uh, this generates. And if I were to go back to a previous conversation that I had with it, you can see that somewhere in here, um, I probably do, 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 asked it, yes, where is Canvas imported from? Because I noticed that it was trying to render Canvas, right? And then it said it apologized and it needed to provide the Canvas variable. Um, it's not imported, right? So it's actually um, a ref that needed to be passed in. So then it did that. So in this case, I just caught it quicker. All right, it's almost done generating our code here. So you can see our constructor for bubble now takes in CTX and Canvas. So that's good. Here's a check collision that it's adding, a function inside the bubble Canvas. Now another interesting thing is last time I did this, it actually did it slightly cleaner. What do I mean by that? Well, last time it actually did step-by-step -step uh, instructions instead of doing all the code at once, right? So it said create the bubble canvas and then it um, you know called created the use effect logic, it created a helper function for creating random integer values, it created the bubble class, um, it did everything separately in helper functions where this time it seems to be doing everything at once and it's even defining like you know check collision inside of the use effect, right? So as a developer I probably wouldn't have written it this way, I probably would want this to be outside. There's no business in this being inside this use effect, but you could basically just prompt it to fix that and clean up the code after the fact. All right, so let's go ahead and copy this. Go to our code sandbox and let's blow away this. Paste our new stuff. Now we probably have an issue because it's still default exporting that bubble canvas. All right, so now uh, we still don't have the bubbles bouncing off of each other. So let's go back to the code and say, okay, cool. Two things. One, the bubbles are not bouncing off of each other. Please add this. And we can say two, um, can you clean up the code a bit by using helper functions and moving some of the logic outside of the use effect. All right, so we're gonna tell it to clean up the code a little bit and we'll see what it creates. So we'll bounce back over here and we'll take a look at our uh, code that it generated last time. So last time it generated a function random int, it generated a function has collision, it created a function called resolve collision, right? So all of this logic is separated outside, 
where this time it decided to shove a lot of it inside. Like now you can see in the bubble component, it has a constructor, a draw, and an update where it calls has collision and it calls resolve collision, right? And the bubble canvas has a use effect where it has less stuff to find inside of that use effect, okay? So by asking it that stuff, hopefully it simplifies the code a little bit. So here we have it creating our check collision function. So again, it took my advice and it said, all right, I'm gonna clean this code up and it moved the check collision uh, or defined a check collision function outside of the use effect. Now it's defining a resolve collision. And again, what's really cool about this is I could figure all this out myself. I could, you know, read and understand how do I check collisions between two circular objects. And, you know, when they have certain velocities going in certain directions and they bump into each other, you know, what's, you know, what's going to happen when they bounce off? What direction in the X and Y direction should they go when they bounce off? But I didn't have to think about any of that stuff. I've coded something like that before. I've coded the game, the game of Pong before, right? A lot of people have when they first start developing. But do I really want to painstakingly go through every single line of code and read up on the math and understand, okay, how do I do this when I can basically say, hey, ChatGPT, create this for me and then let's tweak it together. You know, it's like my, my coding friend, right? So let's see what it does here. And finally, it's creating our bubble canvas. So this use effect should be much simpler this time. Uh, because we told it to to simplify it, moving a lot of the logic outside. Which again, when you're writing code, you always want separation of concerns. You don't want a bunch of code in one spot because then when the reader goes to read it, uh, it gets confusing. So uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Please complete this code. So it looks like it didn't uh, want to put all that logic in one code block. So let's have it complete the rest of the code. Uh, you already showed me that. Can you show me just the bubble canvas? All right, so we just want the bubble canvas because it already, it already, you know, did all this logic. So let's go ahead and just copy all of this logic here and go over here. And we're going to blow away uh, this code here paste it and then we'll uh, wait for it to generate the bubble canvas and we'll paste it there. Another thing to note is in times of high demand, which maybe there's a slight high demand right now for ChatGPT, um, the generation will be a little bit slower. I ran this last night and the rate at which it you know, produced the code was a little bit faster than this. Um, so I can notice that it's slightly slower, uh, which is annoying, but again, this is saving me tons of time. All right, looks like we're getting to the end here. And it's returning our canvas and boom. All right, so we don't want that default export. We just want the bubble canvas itself. Let's go ahead and paste that in here. And let's see if this works. All right, so it's kind of working, but I notice an issue here where some of the bubbles are getting attached to each other, right? So this is an issue I had the first time with ChatGPT3 actually where the bubbles got attached. And there's some reason for this, which I again, don't really care to understand at the moment. So let's go ahead here and say, uh, what, let's describe what the issue is. Uh, some of the bubbles are getting attached to each other when they collide. Can you fix this? Okay. All right, let's see what it says here. To fix, let's add a small separation between the bubbles after resolving the collision. Okay, so this small separation between the bubbles um, is actually something that it had to solve in ChatGPT3 and when I previously created this example in ChatGPT4 uh, yesterday, it had the same thing where I had to prompt it and I said, hey, I have this sticking issue and it said, oh, let me add some space between the bubbles because for some reason, uh, when the bubbles collide, when they bounce off, they're instantly still touching each other, right? And because of that issue, they're probably just constantly sticking and maybe it's some sort of oscillation that's getting bouncing, but then instantly coming back, right? So again, I don't care to really dive deep and understand exactly why that's going on. I can, and I have in the past. This time, I'm just gonna say, fix it for me, okay? So let's see, it's redoing the resolve collision. And hopefully uh, it'll just give us that function and we can just plop it in and return uh, and run our code. All right, so let's copy this code. So resolve collision. So we go back here and we find our resolve collision. Let's just blow this function away and paste this function. 
And all right, we still are we're still getting sticking issues sometimes. Let's see. It seems we still have bubbles sticking to each other sometimes. Maybe we need to just increase the distance or something. Ah, here we go. All right, so this is another thing I've seen before where there's this concept of this conservation of momentum, which, again, I'm not, you know, I took physics in the past. I don't, you know, I know that momentum is something that is conserved in physics, right? But I don't really care to understand all the ins and outs of it, right? I know that it's something that exists. It knows that it's something that exists. And I can take advantage of the concept of conservation of momentum to update this code in order to work more appropriately. So I've also seen it come to this realization in the past. And I would actually be interested to know that if I re-asked this question where I said, hey, please resolve collisions um, more, you know, using the conservation of momentum, right? Again, I don't even need to fully understand what that is. I can just say, hey, please use this um, property to in the code in order to better um, make the bubbles, you know, bounce off of each other, right? So let's see what it does here. And again, the key here is I don't want to write any code. I want to just... I want to pretend I know nothing. I want to pretend I don't have any understanding of how this stuff works other than I know I want to use React and I know I want to use a canvas. All right, so let's copy this. I couldn't read the explanation, but let's go just paste it. We have this religion, uh, collision function. Paste that, and what do we got? What do we got? Someone collide, someone collide. All right, I see some collisions happening, and we're working. Okay, so... Um, we have bubbles flying around the screen, bouncing off the walls and bouncing off of each other. So I think we've accomplished our goal here. Um, now let's go look back at what we did and see how many prompts it took. Okay. So if we scroll to the top, we can see we have one prompt here. Uh, we have a second prompt where I just said, I would like you to clean up the code a little bit. Um, another prompt that says, okay, um, you forgot to pass the context or, and the, or the canvas down rather. Um, so we noticed that bug, which again, if the bug occurred, I could have just copy pasted the error and it would have found the bug for me. Um, I said, all right, there's two things. They're still not bouncing off of each other. And can you make the code a little bit cleaner? It did make the code a little bit cleaner by making some helper functions with a rudimentary resolve collision function. Um, and then finally, uh, we asked it because sometimes ChatGPT doesn't complete all of the code. We said, complete the code. It started to rewrite all of the code, which we said, all right, hold on a second. I only want you to show me the bubble canvas because you, you basically, you generated everything else for me. I only want you to show me the bubble canvas. It did that. And then finally we said, all right, we have this attach issue. Um, some of them are still sticking. It realized it wanted to use conservation of momentum. And finally we got our final resolve collision. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight prompts. Last time it took me seven. This time it took me eight. But again, eight prompts where each prompt is about one to two sentences to get something this complex to be built is pretty cool. And if I want to make it such that the bubbles flash different colors and maybe they're all random colors or maybe there's, you know, 50 bubbles instead of 20 bubbles, all I need to do is keep prompting the GPT for it to improve on this code. Okay. So um, that's one really cool example. Um, there's other examples I'm going to show, but I think that for the sake of time on this video, I'm going to stop uh, with this example and create follow-ups to show some of the other problems that have asked GPT-3 and ask them to chat GPT version 4. And before I finish, I just want to note that this current version of GPT-4 does not allow you to paste images, but soon... Um, and they've demoed this and you can see other videos on YouTube of them demoing this. You can basically draw a back of the napkin picture of a website and say, create this website. You can uh, paste an image of uh, a physics problem and it can actually look at that problem and help you understand it better. Um, so you can actually feed it images and have it interpret what it's looking at. And maybe you want it to help you solve problems, or maybe you just want to, you know, write an article about that picture and want it to help you describe that picture. All sorts of different things are going to be possible once GPT-4 uh, is available to the public such that you can feed it images. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.